In this video, I'll cover the contour tool. A contour is an effect created by adding evenly spaced concentric shapes inside or outside the borders of an object. Contours can be used to create interesting 3D effects, such as shading in complex illustrations, or for creating cuttable outlines to be used by devices such as plotters, engraving machines, and vinyl cutters. Contours can be applied to objects, groups of objects, and text. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. The Contour tool is part of the Effects tool group. This set of tools can be found toward the bottom of the toolbox and can be opened by clicking the small arrow in the lower right corner of whatever icon is displayed. The contour icon is just below shadow. There is also a contour docker, or contour inspector on the Mac, which can be opened by choosing Window, Dockers, Effects, Contour. The options here are the same ones that appear on the property bar when creating or editing a contour. When the contour tool is active, if no object is pre-selected, I can click the object to contour, and the contour options are displayed in the property bar. If an object was pre-selected before activating contour, the property bar would be ready with contour options. For a simple outline, I'll use one contour step, which will follow the shape around at an offset of this distance and have this fill color and outline color. Clicking Inside Contour places the new shape inside the object, and clicking Outside Contour places it along the outside. I'll discuss To Center a bit farther on. I can add steps to increase the number of contours, which proceed from the object's fill color to the contour color. I can change the offset distance, which is the distance between steps, by dragging the fill square swatch, or I can enter the distance manually in the property bar. I can also drag the swatch to switch between inside and outside contours. Contour outline and fill color can be set by clicking the swatches in the property bar, or I can drag a swatch directly onto either the outline diamond or the fill square. The number of contour steps can also be adjusted by dragging the slider, which updates the contour offset distance. By default, the contour colors change gradually from the object's original fill color to the contour fill color. The same applies to the change between the original and contour outline colors. I can switch the color change progression from the default linear to clockwise along the color wheel or counterclockwise, and I'll go back to linear. By default, all contours have the same distance between steps, as well as the same rate of color change. To change this, I can click the Object and Color Acceleration icon and adjust both rates of change at once so that change happens more quickly in the outer contours or in the inner contours. When I click the lock to separate object and color changes, both can be adjusted separately. I'll lock again and bring both back to the center. When the contour is to center, the contour steps fill the inside of the object based on the contour offset distance. I can still adjust the offset distance and the number of steps, and clicking to center again will fill the shape based on the current offset distance. Changing the original shape will affect the contours. I'll activate the Shape tool, whose icon is just below the Pick tool, which displays nodes all around the shape. When I adjust the shape by moving nodes, the contours update to fit. Changing the fill color of the original object by clicking a color swatch will also update the contours. Contours are often used for 3D shadowing or gradient effects, which I can see by right-clicking on the No Color Swatch, which removes all outlines. Contours can also be applied to open curves or shapes with no fill. The gradient is applied from the original outline color to the contour outline color, and I can fill objects by clicking a color swatch. Contours can be applied to text as well. I'll pre-select the text with the Pick tool, activate Contour, and click Outside Contour to apply the current settings. This text has a fountain fill, which means the contours do as well. In this case, I can specify contour fill colors to correspond with the start and end colors of the fountain fill. These contours also have sharp corners to match the sharp corners of the text, 
but I can click the Contour Corners icon and switch to Round or Bevel Corners. If I want to start over or remove the contour, I can click Clear Contour. Only one shape can be contoured at a time, but I can get around this by grouping. With the Pick tool active, I'll hold the Shift key while selecting the two circles, then click Group Objects. Now I can contour both circles at once. If I want to use the same contour for another object, I'll click the new object I want to contour, click Copy Contour Properties, and click one of the contour steps. Finally, contours are connected to the objects on which they're based, so if I need the contours as a separate object, I need to separate them from the original object. I'll right click on the contours and choose Break Contour Apart, and now with the Pick tool, I can select just the contours and move them aside. The contours themselves are now a group, so if I needed to separate each contour shape, I could right click and ungroup. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on the contour tool in Corel Draw. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.